power has gone out, so I'm trying to make the most of it right now. Um, it's the second time that it's happened in like a week, which is weird because it hasn't ever happened before. I'm um, going to go uh, get some YouTube stuff done, answer some emails, not a whole lot of fun stuff, but uh, we're going to return home in a little bit and uh, see if the power's on. If it's still out, then uh, maybe we'll go somewhere and do some cool shit and hopefully take some sexy B-roll of this beautiful area around us. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop off at home real quick, grab some camera equipment, and then we will be off to uh, go. And uh, there's like a little park that's next to me that's just absolutely beautiful. It's got this lake. I've always wanted to take like cinematic footage of it. It's a beautiful cloudy day. I look like a douche wearing glasses, talking to a camera, Jesus, and driving. Probably shouldn't be doing this, but um, it's just, it's beautiful. I live in like the most beautiful area. It's amazing. Uh, well, you'll see. Power's back on. So, T50s and T60s. Basically, it goes like this. Cascadia Audio Talus 2, T50s, just standard Mark III T50s, $159 on Amazon right now. Then it goes the Blues, then the Classics, then the T60s, and then the Mod House Argon Mark III, or you can get the T60P Argons. That is precisely the order in which I think that these sound. Um, now, the difference between each of those models, uh, in my opinion, not to be harsh on the Cascadia Audio, but uh, that's way down here. Then you have the T50s in the middle, and then it's kind of incremental upgrades, right? Like the Classic is not that much better than the Blue, the Blue is not that much better than the T50, and then the T60 is not much better than the Classic or the Blue. However, the gap between the Argon and the rest of the group is really, really big. Um, I think the Argon is a really incredible sounding headphone. And the fact that if you're patient enough with the shipping process and all that fun stuff and having a custom made headphone, you know, 245 bucks, you can buy a brand new Argon Mark III. Now you can buy a T60 Argon from Modhouse for about, I think it's about 385, or you can send this in to be modified for about $90 for the modification. I think the owner of this actually is going to have me send it to Ryan after this. But considering just base stock Argons come in at $245, even with some additional options, like you can get a balanced cable or a case or whatever, to be quite frank with you, it makes the T60 pretty irrelevant. Um, just because you're getting a relatively similar form factor. Yes, you can hear all those squeaks, but you're just getting far superior sound and far superior comfort in my opinion. Now, I just want to be real clear about that from the beginning, because I know there's going to be a lot of questions of, does it stack up against the Argon? Uh, because that is kind of the baseline for you know a t50 reference headphone and no uh it doesn't not even close now if you again if you really like the wood if, you, if that's really a thing for you you know if you just want something a little bit different a little bit spicier uh that might be worth looking into although it is worth noting that i haven't heard the t60 rp argon yet uh, but I'm sure that'll happen down the line. And then we'll talk about that when that time comes. Now, right before we get started, I want to send a huge thank you to the individual who sent this out. Heath, uh, also known as Mild Mannered Individual. Heath is a patron of mine. Thank you very much, Heath, for uh, sending this out and directly supporting the channel. Real quick advertisement here. If you do want to support the channel, if you do like what I do and you want to support it in a direct way, Patreon is the best option. There's a link down below. Thanks, guys. All right, so going with the wood theme of this video, I'm going to talk about this headphone in a bottle as itself and how it compares to other things in the market that are not other T50 or T60 mods. So $300 on Amazon right now. Wood cups, uh, they do make quite a bit of noise, as you can hear. Fairly comfortable, and they're actually sitting on your head, although these pads, while they are fairly big, um, they do kind of not have a broad surface on the actual part that touches your ear. Um, and the pad itself, even though it looks relatively thick, actually feels relatively thin. Uh, sort of like the, almost kind of the way that a, uh, like an HG600 feels, where the pad just feels really thin. This kind of feels like that, especially in the front area. Now, over the $159 T50RP, the stock, um, they did add this little bit of a headband strap, 
uh, which is a welcome addition. It makes uh, the weight distribution not so hot spotty on the top of your head and more evenly distributed throughout. That's a good benefit to see. They've introduced a new input mechanism on the bottom. Sorry, it's making a lot of noise, I apologize. And that is no longer a locking mechanism. So some people are gonna like that, some people are not going to like that. Regarding the power that these require, they are a 50 ohm headphone with a sensitivity level of 92 decibels per milliwatt. Um, which for a, a headphone is on the slightly lower end, so they do need a little bit more power, even though that impedance is relatively uh, low. And I assume if you get them modded to Argon, similar to the T50s, they probably just get lower in uh, efficiency, so they are even harder to power. So that should be something to consider. So you are going to want an amplifier with this headphone, modded or unmodded. So now the sound quality. Uh, Honestly, these are pretty pleasing for like a semi-open headphone, um, which is what these are classified as. They're not fully closed and I don't really consider them fully open. So a semi-closed headphone, uh, they honestly sound pretty nice. They are relatively rolled off in the treble, which um, is going to be an overall pleasing sound signature. The mid-range is fairly good. The bass response is fairly good. The sound staging is all right. And the imaging is, is fairly good for a $300 headphone. Not class leading in really any other categories though. And that's another reason why like even at the price point that this is coming in at, there's just a lot of options that maybe not great at everything, but when you get to that $300 category, you're talking about a lot of headphones that are great at certain things and they have really good certain things. So if you want like better bass response, you could look at like an M1060C um, and open that back up and that's gonna give you, you know, a little bit more in price, but worth the additional cost if you want the bass response or just standard M1060s if you want wider soundstage or Sundaras if you really like mid-range and treble and detail. Uh, so around that $300 price category, uh, you're looking at some other options or if you like more mid-range focus sound for open back headphones, uh, maybe like a 6XX or 58X. Now regarding its sound signature, while it is rolled off in the treble, it is fairly crisp and somewhat quick. Uh, you're not gonna quite get like, you know, again, not class leading or anything like that, but a pleasing degree of detail. Um, it's just slightly recessed. So chimes, bells, things like that, that have a lot of high end frequencies are not gonna be kind of jammed down your throat. And again, this does add to the enjoyability of it, but from a technicality aspect, it's not quite up to par with what is possible at $300. Now with the vocals on this, uh, you get this kind of sound stage that kind of wraps around them, and then you kind of get this good singularity of vocals, and it's kind of happening kind of mid forward. It's not completely out there and it's not completely in your head, but it's kind of mid forward. And that placement of the vocals does sound fairly good, but again, you know, with the vocals, you'll start to see that, you know, there are other headphones that just have a better, richer, more soulful, maybe more, you know, characteristically nuanced, whatever it happens to be, there are just better examples of it on this headphone. Um, and that's kind of going to be the overall theme of this headphone is like, it's good. It's an enjoyable headphone. I can listen to it and I really do enjoy my time with it. Um, but when you get down to the technical aspects of things, uh, it just doesn't quite stack up. And it's sad to see because it's, it's, it's one of those things where it's like, yeah, it's a good headphone. I like it a lot. It has a lot of great attributes to it. It's very enjoyable to listen to. It's not fatiguing at all. I consider it a definite step up from stock T50s um, and even better than some of the other T50 mods that are not the Argons. But sadly, it's really the price point that gets it. Like if these were $200 instead of uh, $300, they would be a lot higher on my recommendations list. But because of that $300 price tag, um, they just kind of get pushed down a little bit. So back to the sound signature. Treble response is... Um, fairly good, fairly, not necessarily even throughout, but it doesn't feel lacking. It does feel like it's a complete sound signature up there. It just doesn't have a lot of presence, a lot of impact. It doesn't have a lot of forwardness to the treble. So you treble heads out there are not really going to like this. Now, when talking about those vocals, that kind of singular characteristic is very nice. Although people who like more broad and more forward vocals are definitely gonna have some better options out there. And also for the flip side of that, where the people who like more soundstage further out vocals are going to like other headphones a little bit better. So this is kind of an in-between. So you might like that depending on what you do like. It's not completely far out. It's not completely close either. Now, mid-range instruments uh, have a good amount of body and presence to them. Guitar, drums have a decent amount of impact, although not quite as much physical impact and visceral feeling as some of the larger size planars like an M1060 or like a Sundara. You know, when a, when a hard drum hits, you know, you kind of get a more tangible feedback feel 
on the side of your head and this does provide that but not quite to that same level and i know that's not necessarily part of the sound but it is part of the experience that listening to the headphone and that's something that i personally really enjoy is that tangibility that's one of the reasons why the aria granted sixteen hundred dollars but that's one of the reasons why the aria is so enjoyable to me it is that impact that it provides now bass response um when i was going into this review i hadn't heard the 60s before um, I had kind of assumed that they were going to up the ante in response to basically what all the mods did for the T50, which was kind of add a little bit of bass response. But uh, Fostex, whether this is a good thing or a bad thing, is going to be debatable, but they did kind of not do that. They really tried to keep kind of the Fostex sound signature. So something like the THX00, you know, you could listen to these two headphones back to back and they're not going to sound exactly alike, but there's definitely influences on the house sound, you know, similar to where if you listen to the mid-range uh, priced Sennheisers, they kind of have a very familiar sound to them. And this is the same story, although I think the XOO had uh, a little bit more forward trouble than these do. This is definitely recessed. I think they took that, uh, that kind of from some of the mods is a little bit of that recession in the trouble response to make them a little bit more pleasing and enjoyable and give them that smoother sound. Um, now, whether this is a result of using wood or not, I don't know. Hopefully this is a sound signature that they went for though, because it seems intentional, uh, because it does match the other Fostex that I've heard really, really well. Now with that bass response, you don't get the most forward bass response. It's not the most impactful. It's not the deepest. Um, it does go fairly low, but again, and uh, I'm going to sidestep from trying not to bring up the T50 mods. Uh, but I think here it really shines. The Argon Mark III has, if not the best, really close to the best bass response you can get for the price, in my opinion. It's large in amount, it's large in feeling, but it's not thick, it's not too bloated, like it's got enough body and form to it to be extraordinarily pleasing, but not fatiguing. It's got this really weird property to it. Listening to the Argon Mark III, I said this in the, the review, and. I'm still not sure how many people actually understand what I'm saying here, but it's the best way I can explain it. But it's like listening to the night sky where you have this overall dark picture and the bright spots or the trouble or the vocals in this circumstance are popping through, but they're not pop popping through in a muffled way. It's not like you're looking at a canvas with lights behind it. It's like you're looking at the night sky. It's incredibly clear and you have all these spots popping through. And that's what listening to the Argon is like. Uh, this is a less dark picture. You know, it's slightly hazier in, uh, you know, those, those spots. It's kind of like listening to a, a cloudy day almost where, you know, some spots are really clear. Some spots are not so clear and a little bit muffled and you may not be able to really reveal what is behind the curtain, so to speak. And so, you know, if you're coming from a base perspective, um, you know, for $245, the Argons just slap this thing in the face. They slap it all around. They drag it out of the street and they beat it into the dirt, basically. But fairly enough, not everybody's into this. So, you know, if you're not including the Argon into this argument, or you're not a base head, so you're not including the 1060C, or even the Emu Teaks, or anything like that, this does end up having a pleasing amount of base response even though it is not the most in majority. So, you know, if you get this, would you be unsatisfied with it? No, uh, but I think that if you do crave bass, you are definitely gonna wanna look at at least some additional pads, if not full on modifying it. So imaging and soundstage are another category with this headphone is good, uh, but not great. And part of this review is a little bit of a failure on my part of not reviewing a lot of semi open headphones. So it's kind of hard to compare but the ones I have heard are primarily all T50s. So I'm gonna bring that up a little bit here just because it's relevant again, sorry. But when you're comparing Soundstage to fully open back headphones, it just doesn't compete. Um, you know, just at the $300 price tag, there are just a number of headphones that beat it out by quite a large margin, even down to like things like KSC 75s, which are 15 or 20 bucks. But when you start introducing the mods specifically like the classic and the Argon, the Soundstage, just, it's not really comparable. So I really feel like for the $300 price tag that they were pricing this at, they needed to, one, beat the mods that exist in the market today. I don't think they do for everything. Um, 
the even the classic it's it's debatable just based off of preference i think like if you like a little bit of a darker sound signature you'll prefer the t60s if you like a little bit more neutral you're going to prefer the classics and then you know the argon sits above here and they really had to not just you know especially coming in at a higher cost they they had to not just compete with them but they had to beat them to offer a better solution especially considering that they're not as comfortable and not everybody's going to like the wood look. So they had a little bit of hurdles to overcome here. And I don't quite think they did it. And imaging and soundstage is really one of those categories where, you know, it's not it's not something that I can really test. But it's definitely like, a, you know, you could hear the two and be like, oh, yeah, the placement is way better on these other two than it is on this one. So where's bass response and mid-range and treble is more preferential. And you can also have a preference on what you like, whether you like an intimate sound or a far away, you know, more sound stage sound. Uh, but I think, you know, you could definitely look at a sound and be like, okay, yeah, that's happening farther away or, you know, the placement is more even or it's got, you know, a, a better degree of imaging and more even imaging, it doesn't have any low points. And this headphone just doesn't really compete there. And part of the main reason is that the center image is really good, the side image is really good, but it's losing that 45 degree angle of attack and it doesn't quite have that. Uh, now, when you're comparing again to the Argon, you're getting kind of this kind of almost box or globe or, you know, kind of just this overall sound around your head, but it's creating really kind of this enclosed sound staging sound. And this, the T60, kind of just shrinks that to right about the headphones. And you always kind of feel like you're listening to the headphones and not really the room environment. Uh, so I think this is going to kind of lead me into my conclusion. Now, this is an odd headphone because uh, it's probably the most modified headphone of any, I think, in terms of like official mods that you can go and buy from a store. I think this probably has the most of any other headphone. Uh, at least that I've reviewed. And it's not like a headphone that just exists in a bottle inside the entire market. There are other options that are extremely similar in looks, extremely similar in build, and there's a number of them. Um, even companies like Deconi, which is, you know, a pad manufacturer, makes their own T50 mod called the Blue. And I think Fossex got put in kind of a difficult position here because of that, because they had to compete with all these mods. And I think the main reason why they don't quite compete is the price range. I think it's about $100 overpriced. If the original was $159, I think the wood cups and the slightly different machining and the strap, you know, I'd say that's maybe worth like 50, 60 extra dollars, not 150, um, not double the cost of the T50s. Now, if it ever goes from 300 to, you know, even 250 is arguable, and then definitely 200, it's definitely going to be a legitimate competitor in the price range. Um, and it is very, very good. It's very enjoyable. I really, again, I wanna emphasize this, even though I'm saying a lot of things like, this is better, this is better, this is better. I still really enjoy this as an overall package, but there's also a ton of other $300 headphones and cheaper that I also really, really enjoy. And this doesn't really have any specific category that it beats other things in, which is a little bit rough to see. And so I think that's gonna be the conclusion is that it's a good headphone. If you bought it, would you be totally disappointed? Certainly not. You're probably gonna really enjoy this, honestly. Uh, but if you're talking about value, if you're talking about considering other options, there are better options out there. If you want this build, but you know, a far better, far superior sound signature for 50 bucks less, and you can go and buy you and your wife some dinner after that, Argon's are the way to go. So I'll leave links to everything I was talking about down below. If you do use those links, those are affiliate links, except for the Mod House website and the Classics website, I'm not affiliated with those, just the Amazon links basically. And those affiliate links do go towards helping the channel. All right guys, thanks very much for watching. My name's Josh, signing off.